Hi everyone, it's KJ My Tech Guy here with another review. If you've been watching my vlogs, you might have noticed that I use my iPad Pro a lot. And that hasn't always been the case. I was the person that liked taking notes on a piece of paper and bringing multiple pens of different colors. But ever since the original iPad Pro, I've been intrigued by the concept of not having to bring multiple notebooks and textbooks around. Fast forward to 2018 with the release of the new iPad Pros and it just might be my favorite piece of tech that I own. In this video, I'm not really going to talk about specs at all, but I'm going to talk about what it's like using the iPad Pro on a daily basis as a college student. So let's get right into it. I want to start off this review by saying that if you just want to use your iPad for media consumption, like for watching Hulu, Netflix, or YouTube, there's a lot more inexpensive tablets out there that can do the job and have really quality screens. The iPad Pro excels in being able to do a bunch of the little things extremely well, which starts to differentiate itself from the other tech products I use. First off, the iPad Pro has its 120Hz ProMotion display. If you haven't experienced 120Hz on a mobile device before, you'll definitely notice how fluid and responsive everything feels. From scrolling through web pages to multitasking between applications, everything is simply fluid. It makes its multitasking features and all animations seem much more fluid than any other laptop or tablet I've ever used. And when you match this with the responsiveness of the Apple Pencil, there's virtually no lag when it comes to writing on the screen when taking notes. The reason why I haven't used tablets for writing notes in the past is because there's always that lag. And that lag always outweighed any sort of benefits of not carrying out multiple notebooks did. Now since there's no lag and since there are apps out there like Notability that allow me to organize and interact with my notes in a seamless way, I can't see myself taking notes any other way at this point. Being able to download lecture slides, mark them up, and add my own notes to them during class has been great. Now I know that I can always go to my iPad and my notes will always be there. And because I also have an iPhone, MacBook Pro, and iMac Pro, I'm able to pull up all of my notes on whatever device I'm closest to at that moment. Aside from note taking itself, also being able to do the assignments directly on my iPad and just upload them directly to whatever homework server there is has been really convenient because a lot of my classes have online submissions. I can just download the problem sets into Notability, mark them up directly, and then save and upload to the respective assignment portals. And little things like being able to copy and paste the actual question details or being able to automatically draw straight lines or boxes are things that I really appreciate and have grown to truly value. I even use my iPad when I quickly need to visualize a coding concept. So yeah, a lot of people will go for the iPad purely because it takes great notes. But why should you go pro? What's the difference with the iPad Pro? First off, the new iPad Pros have this new design with minimal bezels and no true right orientation. Apple intended for you to just pick up your iPad and any orientation should feel correct. Because of this, the bezels are symmetric all around and Face ID works even if the sensors are at the bottom. With those reduced bezels comes the fact that even the 12.9 inch iPad Pro isn't as big as you may think. I'm able to fit the iPad and its keyboard case in a compartment in my backpack that isn't meant for laptops. So it really doesn't add much bulk at all and I end up taking my iPad just about everywhere with me. The new design also uses USB-C and doesn't use lightning cables anymore. This has made the experience a lot better because I'm able to charge my iPad with my laptop charger and I'm also able to use my various USB-C accessories with the iPad as well. Another new and improved feature that they give the pros is the new Apple Pencil. Any of the other Apple Pencil supporting iPads require you to plug in the Apple Pencil to the bottom of the iPad whenever you need to charge. With the new iPad Pros, you just need to magnetically attach the Apple Pencil to the side of the iPad and it charges the pencil to the point where I no longer ever run into a situation where it ever gets discharged. Also, because the pencils are now touch sensitive also, I'm able to quickly switch between the pen and eraser modes. I used to have to go to the top and select the eraser tool, which was one of my biggest gripes with my old iPad. I use the touch gestures so often that I actually find myself using the touch gestures on actual pencils and pens, so take that as you will. Now with the new iPad OS updates and this Apple keyboard that I have, the iPad is the device I pick up for majority of the things that I ever want to do. If I want to look something up, I'm using the iPad. If I need to check and respond to some emails, I'm using the iPad. Something that I've always liked to do with my iPads is edit photos, and now with the new iPad OS update, I can just plug in my SD card directly to the iPad, import the pictures, and just edit right away. Previously, I've had to upload the pictures to my laptop's Lightroom app so that I can edit them on my iPad. Now that middle step is taken away and again makes my iPad even more essential to what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Also, the fact that some Adobe apps like Lightroom are so well developed for the iPad make editing pictures such a great experience. 
The iPad has the horsepower to show me what my edits look like instantly, and exporting the fully edited raw images takes little time at all. At this point, the only things that I find myself having to use my laptop for are editing because of Final Cut Pro and coding because I still haven't been able to find something that makes me comfortable coding on my iPad. Honestly, the iPad Pros have a lot of power on board them, and I feel as if the only reason Apple hasn't developed an iPad-compatible Final Cut Pro app is because it might cannibalize MacBook sales. The iPad Pro is a device that has all my textbooks and normal books on it, so I don't have to carry those extra books in my backpack all the time. It has all the notes in one place so I don't have to carry around multiple notebooks and because it's synced with iCloud it also has my important files at all times. On a daily basis I know that if I have to take only one of my devices I can take the iPad Pro and I can do just about anything that I'd ever want to do. Yes the iPad is fundamentally limited due to the fact that it cannot run a laptop operating systems like Mac OS. However, the fact that iPadOS is tailored so perfectly for the iPad makes me appreciate the fact that everything works so smoothly more than I would appreciate the marginal productivity improvements a full computer operating system would provide. A lot of manufacturers try to toe this line between tablet and computer, and from the fact that Apple has committed to making the iPad a device that isn't a computer, they are able to make a device that is so very close to perfect in all the things it's advertised to do. But of course, the iPad isn't absolutely perfect. There's still gripes that I have with the product. First off, Apple needs to do a better job with its official smart cases. I have the Apple Smart Keyboard, but it's not secure at all, and the keyboard is not that satisfying to type on. It also costs an outrageous $200. However, I use it on a daily basis because the convenience of having a keyboard that always just instantly works without Bluetooth is incredibly valuable to me. The second gripe I have is with the screen, and it's a very minor one because it is 120Hz. But I wish the iPad Pro had an OLED display. I will say that the iPad has a very, very high quality LCD display with great colors and clarity. I just know the types of screens that are possible and would hope that a product that has this word Pro in its name has the very best hardware. All this being said, you probably know where I stand with the iPad Pro at this point. It's a device that I almost always have with me because it does almost everything so well. As a student, it's my everything device and it's the place where I have my notes, have my textbooks, and where I do just about everything else. The iPad Pro has greatly reduced the things that I have to bring on a daily basis in my backpack. Yes, the iPad Pro might have too much power for what you would do with it on a day-to-day -day basis, and yes, it costs a lot of money. But for a device that I use throughout the day, almost every day, the cost seems a lot more justifiable, especially for the fact that everything that you'd want to do on it, it does very well. So that's all I had to talk about for this video. Hopefully it helped if you were on the verge of buying an iPad Pro and weren't sure whether you should buy one or not. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter because I will be posting there a lot and it just keeps you up to date with what I'm doing. As for this channel, I have been posting more consistently, so make sure to subscribe and have the notification bell click to stay up to date on my latest videos. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.